Yo, what's up guys? My name is Alex and welcome to the Peko Tsunami channel. Today, we're going to be knocking out the head of the F22A6. In the previous video, you saw that we opened it up, saw what was inside, and kind of taken back at how well maintained this 300,000 mile engine is. So we're going to continue off of that. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove the valve cover. Now we're going to take off the rocker arm so we can see the camshaft. Hope that was fun because it wasn't fun for me. <laughs> and to be honest, this is a beautiful piece. This is gonna make my car a lot faster. So I can't wait to toss it in. And after that, just a little more disassembly of everything else. So let's get to it. This engine was sourced by a member in the group I follow on Facebook. So thankfully, being a nice guy he is, gave me the engine as is, nothing really wrong with it from what I can remember, even though it's been a while. You're probably wondering, Alex, how are you going to take off all the carbon on this engine if you're going to reuse the head? And I would say, I don't know. <laughs> so today we're going to be using a multitude of ways to remove carbon and hopefully you guys can learn from my mistakes. The first step is I'm going to be using Chemtip. I've seen another YouTuber use this stuff and it has done wonderful jobs for him. I'm gonna see if that will be the same case for me. Alright, so going from that to this, it's not too bad. I feel that though this route is more for those fresher engines that have the light carbon buildup, and nonetheless though, it's pretty effective for what it is. If you're on a budget and don't have carbon that's from hell, <laughs> like mine, then this is probably the way to go. So the first one didn't work, so the second thing I'm going to do is use this. I've seen another YouTuber use it on carbon on the pistons of his engine, so I'm going to try it on the head, but since this is really hardcore buildup. I'm gonna leave it over there for quite a while. So I also got a scotch bright pad just to agitate the area to help the WD-40 clean everything up. And as you can tell, this wasn't cash money. It didn't really work out for me at all, so I'm gonna use a third option here. Then with the third option, I'm gonna have to completely disassemble the head. So I'm gonna remove the valve springs. I got the special tool for it. I recommend this tool 100%. I'm gonna leave it in the description below for an Amazon link, because to be honest, I've seen how people use some sketchy stuff and it honestly did not work out for them. And they usually end up losing the keepers that keep the actual like spring with the valve. So I'm gonna remove those, then the valves, and then that should be it. So make sure you keep everything separated and categorized so you know for a fact where you took them out. Because this is a very old engine, so you wanna keep the exact valves in the exact spots you took them off you gotta reseat them again. And the creme de la creme is gonna be simple green. So not just the regular simple green, because there's a regular simple green actually, I don't know, corrodes. The aluminum kind of gives like a little haze to it. I got the aircraft cleaner, so it's supposed to be softer and easier on aluminum. So just like the runners from the intake, gonna toss this in a tub of hot water and let it soak for a bit, because this thing is disgusting. So, this is the final product. To be honest, I don't think I'm gonna be able to remove the carbon that's already stuck on there. So, I'm just gonna live with it, but to me, it looks like everything else looks out pretty okay. After we got the head in order, I'm gonna try to knock out the valves now. So, as you can tell, the valves, there were some burnt ones. I personally don't know too much about any of this, so I'm just gonna wing it as we go, just like I do everything else on this channel. <laughs> Let's try chem dipping it first. After a while doing chem dip, I realized that the chem dip is not going to completely take off all the carbon. So I'm going to attach these to a drill I have and use 
that Scotch Bright Pad to really get in there, you know, at high speeds. So of course, while I'm doing this, I'm avoiding mating surface between the cylinder head and the valves because those are specific to be seated with the cylinder head itself. So just making a note there, don't try to hit the seats. And as you guys notice, after I've cleaned them, you can see heavy pitting on the seats itself. So not too sure if it was already like this or what, but I'm kind of hoping that the actual lapping will kind of reduce this. If not, I'm going to have to actually wing it and send it. And to be honest, it worked out pretty well. As you can tell, this is the old ones, and this is the one I've done. So I'm gonna continue doing the rest of them now. All right, so now that I've kind of gotten the uh, exhaust valves clean, obviously the intake ones are kind of disgusting, and I kind of sort of cleaned the head of the engine, well, the head I'm gonna put into the engine itself, to the best of my abilities. To be honest, like, this is like trash, but then again, it's only gonna be like another 20 horsepower. It's only gonna be like another 20 horsepower. So I'm not really gonna go in depth of cleaning this thing. I did my best. I do not want to use oven cleaner because I'll just like discolor the entire aluminum and everything and maybe warp the head because it's eating it. But for what it is now, that's the best I'm gonna do. I'm gonna clean these a lot better you know these exhaust ones but for now the intake is <laughs> a lot better than it used to be so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna lap the valves uh, I even picked up this little oil like squirter thingy on eBay for like a dollar fifty it's fucking dope and I love it <laughs> it's hella vintage as hell so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lube these guys up on the on these uh, valves ga valve guides this is my first time ever like you know, valve lapping anything. So I'm pretty interested to see what I can do and hopefully if I lap these pretty good, things will turn out great. So yeah, let's jump right into it. Yo, so I'm actually starting on lapping the valves and I'm having a little issue about like the compound sticking to the valve itself. You see that gray? It used to be pretty silver, so I don't know if that's okay or not, but hopefully you guys can leave me some comments down below. I already tried to use some isopropyl alcohol to clean it off and it didn't clean anything off, so I, I want to say it's good, but... I couldn't find anything online about it, <laughs> but let's continue. That could mean 0.001% for all we know, but even if it was one out- Alright, since we got the valves knocked out, we're gonna actually hit the valve seals. So, these guys, not doing too hot. Pretty gross looking, they're ready to go. And luckily for us, I got brand new ones. And one way to take these off is with this tool right here. So I've seen some people use some crazy stuff, <laughs> like vice grips and everything like that. But, you know, spend the extra cash, grab the right tool, and you won't have any problems. So this tool here, I guess it has like little ridges in the inside of it that help grab the valve seals or valve guides. So let's jump right into it. Uh, 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 uh,
Man, that took a lot more work than I was hoping it would. God damn. I really hope I didn't f these up. <laughs> so, even with this tool, I'm telling you, this whole process sucked. So, we finally got them all off. Now we're gonna clean them up a little bit. After we clean them up a little bit, now we're gonna toss in the new ones. And while we're tossing these in, I'm using a little bit of assembly lube and I got this 10 millimeter 12 point socket. So make sure you have the 12 point, not the regular octagon shape one, because the 12 point grabs better and you don't want it slipping through, right? <laughs> so got this with a mallet and I'm gonna lightly, very lightly tap these into place. So after I've got the valve seals in, I'm actually going to make sure everything is perfectly flat with the straight edge I bought on Amazon. So I didn't have any feeler gauges to really like check it out, so I'm using light. So I'm making sure I'm hitting every single angle, you know, just as a tip, if you don't have one of those, use this. If you see any light, then there's some clearance between those cylinders and you need to get resurfaced. But luckily for me, all my hard work before this was not wasted so let's continue on and when i mean continue let's reinstall the valve springs so when i'm reinstalling the valve springs i'm tossing a rag under the actual combustion chamber to hold in the valves so i can just press in the keepers with the tool i got very simple and easy feels good springs are a lot stiffer than the uh, ones that were in before. All finished. God. And that's it guys. The whole head is assembled and ready to go. The next video is going to be what the hell happened to this build. <laughs> so I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.